The latest update to Cycles 4D introduces a host of new features and optimizations. Let's jump in and have a look. The Cycles 4D node editor has had a significant update in the latest version. As you can see looking at the node editor, the list view now has colors per channel which relate to the colors directly linked to the nodes. The filter view is now contextual, so if we type in something, you can see it updates automatically and you can choose the appropriate node. We have new icons. First, we have different types of wiring now, so you can change it from the tangent mode, which is the current default mode, to linear, which will give you nice straight wires. We have a new mini viewer, which lets you navigate your scene Using the inner square, we can move around and find the nodes that we want to look at. This helps when you've got a busy node editor, so you can see exactly the area that you need to look at. The icon in the list will let you enable and disable the mini viewer. And then all the alignment tools introduced in the previous version now have icons up here so that you can easily access them to clean up your nodes. Going into the nodes, you can see now that each node has a new option so that we can interactively view the appropriate channel when we need to. So looking at the geometry node and the pointiness, if I click the pointiness text, it highlights it and you'll see the real-time preview window updates and shows just the pointiness coming out of this node. If we want to start adjusting that, if we go to our color ramp and click the color channel, it's then going to show exactly what we're editing. So we can adjust the gradient, and fine tune and get the correct results we want out of the pointiness channel and you can see it's much better in the latest version working exactly how you want for cavity maps and all that sort of effects that you want from the pointiness so this gives us the ability to interactively look at different channels to know exactly what they do and what we can pull out of them we also have the new pivot node which lets you repipe our wires in any direction and have multiple outputs coming from the pivot node. To add it, you simply control alt, draw a line, and it will add the pivot node. The pivot node does nothing apart from pass through the information, so it's simply a way to clean up your nodes. Framing nodes is now possible by selecting group of nodes, right click, frame selected, to create a frame node, which you can then move around and add more nodes to. Unlike a group, the wires bypass straight through the frame node just to help clean up and label and organize your systems. Attributes can now be directly dragged straight into the node editor. Let's have a look at how this works. I'm going to hide our model here and create a new mesh. Let's create a sphere. I'm going to make this editable and select a loop. Let's add a set selection. And now with the set selection, I can directly drag that straight into the node editor. And that creates the appropriate node and the appropriate attributes tag on the object with the selection already set up for you. So now we now have access to that selection directly within the node editor without having to set that up manually. The new Cycles 4D Bake will let you bake down the materials on your object. Let's go to the Cycles 4D menu, select Bake, and it opens up this new dialog. In the dialog, you can change the type that you want to bake out, the different types that you want to save to, path to your baking, custom or preset sizes, and then the different channels you want to bake. Simply hit bake, and it will bake down the material into a convenient texture set. Then you can reload that onto your object. Cycles 4D camera tag has some fantastic new post effects options for bloom, glare, vignettes and the filmic filter to help add effects to your scene. Let's add a simple torus object. We'll simply scale this down and add an emissive material to it so we've got something that we can add some effects to. So we have a nice glowing torus object. Go to our post effects and enable bloom 
and you can see the bloom channel creates a nice glow around the object. You can get real time feedback for the threshold, bloom intensity and the blur radius to create the type of look that you really need. Increase the strength and adjust the radius to fine tune the look. The glare option creates streaks and glows on the object's surfaces. Interactively change the settings, spectrum intensity and spectrum shift to change the color of the streaks. Add vignettes for post vignetting effects. You can change the radius of the blur, the intensity of the vignettes, you can change the color and the offset to get exactly the look you need from your camera. Using the filmic filter, you can change the colors from grayscale, false colors, and various different types of contrasts. To save you going into post for any of these effects, you can do it directly in your viewport with the new post effects inside of Cycles 4D. Have you ever wished that you could directly render and work with the MoGraph matrix object? Well, finally you can in the latest update of Cycles 4D. You can render MoGraph matrix object with no geometry, giving you the full benefits and speed of the matrix object from MoGraph without the overhead. Simply add the Cycles instance tag and have instant rendering points. and get fast feedback directly inside of the Cycles render engine. Change the random scale, size multiplier, or even change the actual object that gets rendered by dropping a new object into the objects list. Directly access the matrix colors using the new matrix info node giving you information and color information from the matrix object you can pipe the color directly into any color channel you can also view the different channels available as never before finally see exactly what's happening with the matrix clones all the information can be piped out and used in different scenarios for example, let's set up a scene where we're using the matrix shade and effector to scale and color matrices. Let's add some color. Change the fall off. And put it inside the matrix effectors list so it's affecting the matrices. And you can see it instantly updates the matrix rendering for interactive, for fully interactive MoGraph, changing the scale. Let's take it a step further and create a second shader effector. Change the color of this one. Lower the scale. Make sure it's inside of the matrices to create unique looks using MoGraph tools with no overhead of geometry in your scene for fast interactive MoGraph. Let's start using some of the options such as the scale output. You can see it changes the color. What we want to do is we want to increase that contrast by adding a math node. Let's color the metallic channel. Add a math node so that we can control the contrast of the scale channel and pipe this through a color ramp as a factor for an emission node. So let's get the color ramp. Very 
convert the knots so that we can access the black and white parts of the scale output from the matrix information. Add an emission node that we're going to mix using the mix shader. Then pipe the ramp into the factor to pull out just the white matrices inside of the matrix object. You can see that they have an emission shader and the rest of it is using the principal shader with a nice reflective material for full control over the matrix object, the matrix node for the first time ever inside of Cycles 4D.